Beethoven. 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 Da 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 dum. Da 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 dum. Wild eyes, crazy hair, deaf, and the single monument of classical music. He's the guy who everyone, I think, takes for granted. We all think we know Beethoven, the Ninth Symphony. We know how that piece goes after that. The point about Beethoven is we've got to start thinking about him differently. We've got to imagine him as somebody who's not creating these masterpieces that we all know and love that define classical music. We've got to go back to what he did when he was writing them. Because he doesn't want you to take any of this music for granted. He wants you to feel that you're hearing it all for the first time. Every single piece of Beethoven, when it starts, everything is possible. Think about the Fifth Symphony, da 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 dum. That could go anywhere from that point. It's not about da 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 dum, da 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 dum. We don't know that. The Eighth Symphony, you, you think of it as, as, a, as a small symphony before the Ninth Symphony. Every bar of that thing is doing utterly, utterly unexpected things with music. The Violin Concerto it starts with four timpani strokes. Boom, boom. Nobody had ever done that before. <gasps> okay, three crazy facts about Beethoven. First is, his father tried to pass him off uh, as a seven-year-old virtuoso prodigy when he was actually a teenager. Now, basically, he wanted him to be the next Mozart and make tons of money off him. Second crazy fact is that he was probably a pupil of Mozart, and Mozart is said to have said about him, you know, watch out for this one, he's, he's gonna do something. You know, he, he was right, Wolfgang, he, he got it right. The third crazy fact is that he did smile. There's a report of him uh, at the end of his life saying, when Beethoven smiled, despite the, the grumpiness and the hair, not the glasses, but everything else, uh, that the world lit up. So, you can, I mean, how, can you imagine Beethoven smiling? But he really did. You know, this is, a, this is a living, breathing, smiling human being. I mean, even if he was pretty deaf and pretty grumpy. The thing he's really doing, and what, the, why he's finding life difficult, is because he's doing really the hardest thing you can do as a composer, which is to move every single form that he touches. Symphonies, piano sonatas, string quartets, opera, sacred music, none of it takes any of the conventions as they are. You know, he's always wanting to, to blow them apart. These are the biggest symphonies ever written. The only opera is about a freedom-fighting woman. It go goes beyond feminism, what Beethoven's doing in, in, in the early 19th century. What Beethoven does to you as a, as a listener, he makes it easy for you in one way. Think about the start of the Eroica Symphony. That's a call to attention. I mean, you can't be bored when that's happening. He's saying, listen to this. And you've got to do that. You can't be complacent when you're listening to, listening to any music by Beethoven because he grabs you by the scruff of your, well, it's not really the scruff of your neck, it's kind of the scruff of your soul. Do ears have scruffs? For me, it, every piece then becomes a kind of existential journey. You start somewhere and you end up in a completely unexpected place. And what makes you go back to them is the sense that at every moment, everything is possible. Now it's a universe of sound. So Beethoven really is far crazier even than his hair and his wild eyes. Get into it.